What's going on, everybody? Andrew Thompson here of the Andrew Thompson Interviews YouTube channel and the great postwrestling.com. Joining me today is a man who really doesn't need an introduction, but we're going to go ahead and give him one anyway. You know, maybe he'll blow up, rock and strap him real quick. His name is Jay Riso Christian, or as we all know him, former NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Intercontinental Champion, World Champion. Christian, how you doing today, man? Good, Andrew. What's going on, man? How are you? Everything's good, man. I appreciate you joining me, uh, taking the time out of your day to do this. Uh, of course, we're here to promote the Cage Fighter World's Collab film, drops May 16th on Fight TV. This thing is literally loaded. It has you, John Moxley, uh, Chuck Liddell, Luke Rockhold, and a, 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 a cast full of stars. Uh, just tell me what was it like to be a part of this, and how excited are you to, to have everybody else see the final product? Yeah, I mean, you know, Gina Gershon is in the movie as well. Obviously, um, really um, well-known Um actor i mean she's she's done some 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 really big movies and uh you know she was great to work with as well um yeah i mean it was just it's kind of cool how it all came together you know just um it seems like this type of movie is uh is really relevant at this point in time with uh you know we've seen you know over the years the past few years here with with pro wrestlers making a jump over to mma you know with um you know guys like brock lesnar uh we've seen cm punk and you know more recently jake hager um, formerly uh, Jack Swagger, you know, kind of uh, fighting for Bellator. So it's um, it, it's kind of uh, kind of goes right in line with current kind of what you, what you're seeing. You know, is is um, a lot of guys want to challenge themselves. Even you know, obviously Bobby Lashley did that as well. Um, so you know, I think even way back, I, I, I'm, I feel like Ken Shamrock might have been the very first kind of pioneer to go from pro wrestling into MMA. I think that he, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think he got a start in, in, um, in pro wrestling. Um, but yeah, no, it was an exciting project. We shot it up in, in Saskatchewan in Canada. Uh, it was freezing cold that winter. So, uh, <laughs> but it, it, you know, like I said, it's very relevant to what's going on now. I think that it was a lot of fun to do. Um, obviously, like I said, had uh, some big names from, from wrestling and from MMA uh, involved. So, um, and, and obviously it's a, you know, kind of a great partnership with, with fight to kind of have the streaming and the kind of, um, you know, what's going on in the world with, with, um, you know, everything kind of, uh, being put on hold here for a little while. It, um, hopefully provide a, a nice escape for people to, um, to check it out. Cause then we've seen like over the past even like last two decades, honestly, we've seen a lot of wrestlers make that transition to acting and start getting more involved in film. Uh, and we always hear like in, in various interviews, like a lot of wrestlers speak about like how smooth the transition can be from, you know, the in-ring performing and going in front of the crowd to, you know, uh, going into acting. Uh, has, was that a, a smooth transition for you as well? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've done a little bit um, before this. Um, you know, I've done a couple uh independent movies uh, i did a little bit of work on a, on a tv show um on sci-fi called haven mm. and it was on that as well and a canadian tv series called murdoch mysteries so um you know it was just it, it's just something fun to do you know when i when i stepped out of the ring i wanted to, to try to find some new challenges and things that you know uh, maybe wasn't necessarily um as good at as I was wrestling. So, you know, you're always looking for a creative outlet to, to try and um, find things to stimulate you and to, um, to, to challenge you. And that's kind of what I, what I looked at, you know, not just with, with like acting, but with, with other things as well. Like when we, when we wrote and produced the Edge and Christian show on the WWE network and when we were, uh, uh, you know, doing the, the, the podcast and, and things like that. So I was just trying to find different cre creative outlets, but yeah, I mean, the thing is you play a character when you know you play the character of christian and you know so um it very much falls in line with with understanding what it takes to to bring a character to life and, and having um you know also having that character be on television for you know for how many years and, and figuring figuring out ways to 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 tinker with it and to to make it relevant when you're on tv every single week so it seems like a natural transition because you know you are playing a role when you're when you're on television so yeah it's um but it's fun like i mean you know it, the only way to get better is if you work with people that are better than you and that's the situations that i try right. to i say uh would, would you say like even though like even when you step away from the ring do you feel like there's still that like that inner hunger to create like just to create anything like be a part of something that you can have you know dip your fingers in and you know make your own yeah i like to do things that make me nervous 
you know? <laughs> I'm the same way, man. Yeah, when there's, when there's a very real chance that you can fail at something, uh, to me, that's challenging. And, um, you know, I think there's two ways to go about things that scare you. Either you, you run away from them or you kind of go after them. And I've always chose to kind of go after the things that scare me or make me nervous. Or like I said, there's a real possibility of failing. So that's kind of how I approach it. All right, right, right. And just to go into your in-ring career, man, your in-ring uh, career, man, like, of course, you know, I'm a, I'm a super fan, man. I love professional wrestling more than legit, mo mo most of you know, other than family. I love professional wrestling. So I just wanted to uh, go back into, you know, some of your early days. And I think one of the most underrated runs of your career was when you were with the Un-Americans. Like, I'm not trying to make you feel old, but I, I was I was six years old when you were doing that. Like, I remember it vividly. It was, you, la you, Lance Storm, um, the late Andrew Martin that we all know as Tess, and William Regal later joined. Uh, just tell me, uh, what was your experience like working with them, and do you have any fond memories uh, from your time with that group? Yeah, obviously I'm friends with all those guys. So, um, um, you know, you talked about before about acting and playing different roles, and, um, you know, that was a hard – that was a, a hard um, – it wasn't hard working with those guys because I was friends with all those guys, and they were, they were all super talented and, and – so that wasn't the, the issue. The issue was, is the, uh, for me was I couldn't sink my teeth into that character as much as I wanted to, because, um, I didn't necessarily, uh, believe in it and mm. uh, the things I was saying and doing, and it's hard to, to go out there and like, you know, make people believe when you're trying to figure out how to do it. You know what I mean? When you don't believe it a hundred percent, it's hard to go out and make people believe, believe what what you do. So I struggled with that a little bit. Um, and it's not that it wasn't for lack of trying. It was just, I couldn't figure out how to, to make that, that, um, type of character connect with the audience the way I had, um, before that and after it. So I, I really, it was a, a good learning experience for me. Um, as far as, you know, character development and things like that. All right. And I, and like one, one thing I specifically remember from that period of time is like the dynamic that sh that all three of you guys had at the time, you, Lance Storm and, and Tess, like it would be like you and Lance Storm, like when you would be talking to people, or, you know, doing camera work or, you know, delivering promos or whatever it may be, like people in, in character, of course, they would like try to not take you guys seriously. But when Tess stepped up, everybody was like, okay, we got, we got into the big guy. And it, I always like that, you know, that dynamic that you guys had. And then like, it played into the ring as well. Like, so that's one thing I always enjoyed about that, you know, that specific yeah. time. We're with, with, you know, with Test, there'd be like, you know, with, with Lance and I were tag team champions and we always had that kind of test, <laughs> the big guy in our back pocket. <laughs> Hell us out, help us in the trouble. So yeah, it was, it was a good dynamic. I say one one thing I did want to also ask you about. I got to jog your memory here, right? I hope I'm hoping that you remember. Uh, so this was the the 2003 Royal Rumble pay per view, right? And they 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 were doing this whole thing where the WWE they were building up to the the, the Chris Jericho Shawn Michaels match at Mania 19. And I remember when you went script. So I think Chris Jericho's music hit. Shawn Michaels was the number one entrant. Chris Jericho was supposed to come out at number two, and it was you that came out. You had on this uh. His, his signature, you know, all, all of his all his garments on and stuff like that. It was it was funny, and Chris Jericho, of course, came back from behind, and you know that led to the whole thing. Uh, do you have any recollection of that, or you know whose idea was that to you know have you play the you know play play you know play the, the trickster in that role? Yeah, I think I think that might have been Chris's idea. Mm. Uh, you know the um, you know it was just like try like I said uh, you know he was he was going into a feud I think at the time with with Shawn Michaels and. It was just kind of um, a good little uh, little swerve, you know, a good little, like, um, you know, kind of started off hot. And, um, you know, it, it just it made sense since we were kind of like these, uh, these kind of smarmy um, characters that would do anything to get a, um, a little bit of an advantage. So it just made sense, and it was good for both of us, you know, um, mm -hmm. that, that uh, you know, for crowd reactions and like I said it was a good surprise and many time you can kind of surprise a crowd and, and get a little reaction that way it's uh you've done your job right right and the speed of the current times we all know you're a part of the WWE backstage crew on FS1 uh what, what has it been like to you know work with that crew you know mix it up with all the different types of people on that show and you know just having a variety of guests on and you know getting to interview them no it's fun and uh, it's like what we talked about earlier doing doing different things and um you know when I had the chance to um to audition for the show. Um, I was really excited about it. Um, you know, it's uh, a show like this has never been done before. 
And um, it just was, it was really intriguing to me, you know, obviously with, um, with WWE moving to Fox in September, um, the SmackDown show was huge. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, just to kind of get into the ground floor of a, sh- of a show like this. And yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's a lot, it's a, it's pretty, and, and to get along with everybody on the panel as well, it just seems like there's a good chemistry there and we just have fun with it. You know, we, we really do have a good time and um, you know, it's, it, it leaves a lot of room to kind of ad lib and, and to um, you know, what if things pop up, just kind of uh, go off the cuff a lot. And it's, um, it, it's interesting though. Yeah. Being on the other side of it and, and interviewing people and, you know, like I said, it's just it's, a, it's another challenge and a, another fun thing to do. And I can't say enough about how uh, fun that show has been to to do with everybody involved, from everybody backstage behind the um, behind the cameras of that show, and and um, and everybody that's on the panels. It's just a blast to go to work and do that every every time. And saying one of my favorite parents on that show, man, is you and Booker T. Like y- y'all are hilarious. Like y- y'all always throwing like these little like sidebar comments at each other, and it- it's all it's all in jokes. It- and it's hilarious. And it seemed like you two like have always been like like throughout your careers, like you two have always and even ended up ended up in the same places as you know you mentioned outside of WWE with the TNA now known as Impact Wrestling. Uh, and it seemed like you and Booker T. You guys have always maintained that like sort of friendship and that like jokey joke type of relationship between the two of you. And it, it comes, it comes off real well on screen, like in very like natural, like because there's a lot of people that gotta like force that type of you know natural yeah. thing, that natural back and forth, like that wittiness. But it seems like with you and Booker, like y'all get each other. Yeah, no, we're 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 good friends. You know, we um, we wrestled a lot together um, over the years when he came to WWE. We were kind of paired together a lot on live events, like even like non televised events for probably a year or maybe even more straight just basically wrestle each other every night and you know we, we we came to have this chemistry um on and off screen type thing and we just became good friends and um yeah you know we just uh, have this kind of thing where you know <laughs> we just always try to, to try to you know, poke the other one see if we can get the other one to laugh and, and uh, <laughs> uh but yeah we have, we have a good rapport and good chemistry and, and, uh, and a good relationship for sure yeah, say, and uh, you know, speak. I just mentioned uh, TNA. I, I just wanted to get your, you know, your quick thoughts on something real quick. I know that uh, when you know you departed from WWE and left and went to TNA, uh, what was one of the decisions that you know factored into that was just because you wanted to like may, maybe prove within yourself that you could be, you know, that headlining guy, and you wanted because because uh, throughout the first one of your career in WWE, it was like tag team champion, intercontinental champion, you know, European title titles like that. And what, what was your decision to head to TNA was like more of a inner thing. And it's like, I, I know that I can go and be the headline guy and be the main guy. And I'm gonna go prove that to everybody. And it was like, but, but not more so of like proving everybody wrong, but like just proving yourself right type thing. Yeah, I think in life, you gotta, you gotta bet on yourself, right? Yeah, and, right. you know, there was a lot of factors, you know, with, with WWE, like my contract was coming up and I was, um, my body was kind of worn down from being on the road as long as it was. And I needed to give my body a break from that schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, growing up to do, I was really young. Um, so I needed to kind of find myself as you know, who I was as a person. And um, so it gave me an opportunity to do that. And at the time, you know, TNA was running out of Orlando. So it was a drive for me. You know, I didn't have to get on a plane. And uh, <laughs> so it was that there was a benefit of that. But yeah, it ultimately was, you know, the, the goal was to, to leave and to come back and to, like I said, bet on myself and to prove to, to myself more than anything that even if it was on a smaller scale, you know, I could carry a show. I could main event matches. I could be the guy that was counted on um, as the face of a show. And that was very much the goal. And the goal was to, like I said, bet on myself, go away for a little while and come back and be better than I was before and be someone that could be trusted upon to be uh, put in, in, in bigger situations. I think that that. And, so in, and in TNA, you had the opportunity to work with guys like and hit headline shows with guys like Samoa Joe. And we've seen with, uh, how far he's come, like just throughout his, like just long career, like very, very long career that Samoa Joe has had great career. Uh, and, and even now where he's at in WWE, you know, of course, like he, he's been sort of kind of bitten by the injury bug a little bit. And it seems like every time he's about to, you know, get to the upper echelon, like something, you know, it just comes right back to him. But, but regardless of all that, I still think he's had a great run in WWE so far. How, how cool is it to like see guys that you work with, you know, in other places and then, you know, have an opportunity to see them uh, in, in WWE and, you know, having, uh, having success there? 
yeah, it's cool. You know, like that was one of the, the fun things about going to TNA. There was a lot of uh, kind of untapped potential there at the time. And, you know, you mentioned Samoa Joe, who, you know, obviously um, is a unique talent, um, mm-hmm. got all the tools. Um, and like I said, he's got some unfortunate luck here, lasted a while. And I think, um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised at some point for him to see him with a, with a world title around his waist. And I hope it does happen for him. Okay, uh, so. Then also you just, you see a guy like AJ Styles who, when I went there and, you know, we were paired together for a long time and I really saw the potential in him when, when we were um, put together and, um, you know, to see what, see how far he's come and where he's at and become this, uh, you know, probably, you know, top three, in my opinion, in ring talents at this point in time. Um, and a guy that they can put out in a situation and, um, and know that he's going to deliver. I mean, I, that's that's impressive. I think of a guy like Bobby Roode as well. Um, yep. with, I'm really glad it's gotten a chance here in the last little while to to, to um, step up. I really think this type of persona is much better suited for him than being quote unquote baby face. And he's he's really talented as well. So yeah, to see you know guys like like that, um, it it's, uh, makes me happy because they're, they're also friends of mine. And I also really quick, I wanted to get your thoughts about you know what what obviously happened over the past. Uh, past week or so, you know, we saw a number of people behind the scenes and on, on scenes uh, get released or furloughed from the WWE, uh, real sad circumstances of what's going on in the world right now. Uh, two names specifically, like specifically about the wrestlers uh, that really shocked me and caught me off guard were, were Leo Rush and Zack Ryder. Uh, you know, you have a guy like Zack, who I know you're, who I know you're uh, good friends with. It seems like er, like early on in his career, like he was like sort of like an innovator as far as the social media and, you know, building yourself up via that platform and like, you know, kind of had like his, you know, the rug pulled from under him, you know, for, for lack of better terms. And, you know, were there any names on that list that you, you know, felt like, you know, you, you, well, you, that you think will thrive once, you know, the, the, the wrestling and, you know, the world just gets back uh, to, so, so it tries to get back to what it was previously? Yeah, um, you know, it was, um, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, you know, that mm-hmm. like, the uncertainty of what's going on right now, it's affected everybody in, in some way. And obviously it's, it's hard to see people and especially, you know, when there's their friends, you know, lose their jobs, you know what, but also everybody that happened to uh, is talented and we're there for, for a reason, you know, right. and I think that um, uh, in situations like this can, it can be motivating. And, you know, I know Zach Ryder very well. You, you, you named him, so I'll use him as an example. I know he's a really motivated individual. Um, and yeah, he's um, kind of has his finger on the pulse of, of, of what is kind of relevant. And we saw it with like before, like with YouTube show and things like that, like kind of before mm-hmm. he's already doing that. So he's already on to the next thing, you know, he's going to be fine. And I think that, um, like I said, you use this as a, as a performer and as a person, you use this as fuel, um, I think, to, to better yourself and to, to, to move on. Like there's no choice but to move on. And um and, and to keep moving forward, that's all you can do. And it's a, it's a tough situation, but um, you know, just hope we kind of come out of this on the other side, and everybody ends up um, being all right. I say, and you know, I, I know a lot of people uh, have been supporting Zach Ryder. Like I've been seeing that crazy on social media. And speaking of you know social media fanfare, I know I just know that you have seen like all these people on social media just tagging you at like you know pleading with WWE to like put you in the Hall of Fame, like. Truthfully, is like is is that something that that you like? Not not necessarily like you know you chasing out to like ah if it doesn't happen like the world is going to end like, but but would that be like a nice you know accolade to be like you know damn like yeah I'm in the I'm in the Hall of Fame and and and, and you know it's other Hall of Fame you got the George Trego Luthes Hall of Fame that I know a lot of people cherish and I I think that's like not to compare Hall of Fames but I think that's like you know a, a very prestigious one as well but what would it mean something you know just a little bit more special to you know be honored by WWE in that in that format uh yeah I mean it's not something that I think about on a daily basis you know, right. I, right. honestly I always say like if I had like a dime for every time somebody came up to me some you know Hall of Fame you know it'd be it'd be great uh <laughs> you know <laughs> but yeah I don't think about it you know it is what it is and it's like I don't feel like that um you know the things that i've done i'm, I'm, I'm content with with what i've accomplished and right. uh, it's like everybody everybody uh, gets offended and i appreciate that i really do appreciate that people want to see me in there but it's also you know it's not like this is going to be the last year 
or the next next year is going to be the last year. The year after that, be, <laughs> you know, there's, you know, it's, <laughs> so I don't think about it. Um, honestly, I don't think about it at all. It doesn't bother me. So I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah, but I do appreciate that the people want to see me in there. But I, I, I think that's a good mindset to have. Like I, I don't think it's like. Like I said, like I mentioned before, like even you know, you answered the question. I don't think it's like something you like lose a sleep over at night, like you like wake up at three AM like damn, I'm not in the Hall of Fame. Like I don't think, I don't think it's like I don't think it's I don't think it's that serious. But like I, I do think it would like me personally, just as a fan, I think it would be cool as hell, like if they, you know, if they if they, if they put you in. But that's just me. But uh one one thing I also wanted to ask you was we obviously saw the uh, the WWE twenty four documentary that uh that, that was uh, up on the network about Edge. Oh, so when Ed, it was a specific part of that documentary when after the SummerSlam thing, obviously with the spear and the last, and you know that was like uh, a off the cuff thing, and I, Elias was just smart enough to, to know what was about to happen, uh, and and that was also like kind of like around the time when you and Edge sort of put the podcast on hiatus. I just wanted to ask, like, what, was that the reason why you guys put the podcast on hiatus? Because Edge was getting ready to, you know, now the cat out of the cats out of the bag, like he was getting ready to, you know, prepping to return? Yeah, um, well, I mean, it was part of it. I mean, the other part of it was that Beth was was uh, doing commentary. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Traveling quite a bit more. And it was, you know, as, as, as weird as it sounds to um, kind of put aside, um, you know, like it only, you know, we we'd, sometimes it'd be an hour, sometimes it'd be two hours, sometimes it'd be two and a half hours. But, you know, as weird as it sounds, sometimes in a week it's hard, especially when you have kids, it's hard to set that aside when, you know, like I said, when Beth was traveling and made it hard for him to kind of, when he was kind of doing the solo dad thing, made it hard for him to, um, to kind of dedicate that time, but also that he was now, you know, training. Um, and I knew that. And, um, but he, you know what, it was, uh, we had a lot of fun doing it and it was, it was, it was hard to, to step away from it, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll see, you know, we got, we've got a couple of things going on in the pipeline here. So we'll see what happens in, in uh, when everything kind of clears up here. There you have it, folks. We got, a, we got we got some things in the pipeline. Hopefully, the podcast come. I'm not gonna. Lie. I, I love the podcast. Like honestly, it was it was a real good podcast. Like you guys do great interviews. I I, I really like that, that. That's my thing. Like doing interviews. I love doing interviews. So like you know, it, it was cool to you know hear you guys' perspective on that stuff. Uh, just real quick, if you and Edge were a tandem today, like what are some of the current crops, the current crop of teams that you guys would think you would have great matches? But not only in WWE, but we got so many different promotions: AEW, New Japan, uh, so many independent promotions, man. So many great tag teams out there. Uh, what, what, what teams uh, do you guys think you would have some great matches with? I mean, I think you, I mean, we were, we were one of those teams that could kind of adapt to any style. So I think that, you know, you think about any of the other teams that are, that are big right now. Um, then you could talk dream match. We talk about like, you know, um, we're both good friends with the revival. So, you know, you think about that, or I know that a lot of people would love to see Edge and Christian against the young bucks, or they would have loved to see, you know, but like for me, you know, if we're talking WWE, you know, um, you know, like you got to say, you know, the Usos. Like we never had a chance to to wrestle the Usos, which would have been amazing. Um, you know, there's the um, the Edge and Christian versus the New Day. If you think about like the um, the backstage or the promo, oh, that, segment. that would be but, hilarious. <laughs> so I mean, if you think about that, um, yeah, there's uh, and it, it's really cool to see that the a little resurgence in, in the tag team division too. Um, so obviously that that's, uh, uh, holds a special place in our hearts for, you know, kind of put us on the map. Um, so, you know, those off the top of my head, like those probably the two that stand out to you. So new day, I think would be, would be pretty, you know, you could do some really cool stuff with those guys. And, and just to clear something up real quick, uh, like this, like a long time ago, there was like the, the, this rumor, uh, while you were in WWE that, so it was like around 2009 ish. I think it was the I think it was the 2009 Royal Rumble pay per view. There was this uh, rumor that you were the one that was supposed to cost Jeff Hardy the WWE Championship match against Edge, and it ultimately ended up being I think it was Matt Hardy who who attacked him. Well, was that supposed to be you? Um, I think I, I don't know if it was uh, officially supposed to be me. I know that mm -hmm. it probably voted out there, and I think oh, that, okay, it, okay. that it was you know, in discussions, but I don't know if it ever got to the point where it was actually supposed to be me, but I know mm -hmm. that it, I, from what I understand, it was, it was kind of out there, but never like, yes, this is, this is what it's going to be. I, I, I do. I say, and uh, just, just to wrap it up here, one last question, Christian, I do thank you for your time. I greatly appreciate it. This is real cool. Uh, you had actually had the chance to wrestle at a Wrestle Kingdom. 
Like mm-hmm. I did, I did not know this like at all. I, I know it was you, AJ, uh, and PD Williams. You guys faced um, Minoru Tanaka, Minoru Tanaka, um, Finn Balor, and Milano Collection AT. What, like, what? Just, just walk me through. Like, what, what was that like? I, I obviously know that New Japan, like what it is now, is like a, like a grand, grand, way grander than what it was back then. Obviously, but still, Wrestle Kingdom is Wrestle Kingdom to me. So what was that? What was that like? For, what was that experience like for you? And what was like just the overall feel of you know being in a different setting like that? No, it was fun. Um, I, I really am glad I had a chance to do it. Um, you know, I've been a fan of, of uh, Japanese uh, of, of the wrestling promotions over there, of the culture. Like I love going to Japan. I love visiting there. I love performing there. Um, so um, and I, before. I went to WWE. I had a chance to wrestle for Edge and I both for a small promotion over there. And, um, you know, wrestling in Cork and Hall at that time was the biggest venue that I'd wrestled in. And that was pretty exciting too, um, for me, um, to experience that and to be able to go back years later and wrestle there many times for WWE, uh, was also very cool, but, you know, getting a chance to wrestle for the biggest promotion over there, uh, new Japan was really exciting to me. And when I got over there and it was, um, you know, after wrestling on multiple WrestleManias, that's the closest thing that I'd ever been on that was the size of a WrestleMania. And mm. I'd say there was probably 40 or 50,000 people in the stadium that, for that show. So it felt like a really big deal. Um, uh, it was fun, man. I just had a great experience. And, you know, we're talking about um, Finn Balor, who at the time was Prince Devitt, um, mm. getting there with, the young, with him when he was uh, young and kind of starting out. It was kind of one of those ones, too. Like, yeah, yeah, this kid's going to be something. Yeah. You could see at that point. So it was, it was a lot of fun. Okay. So yeah, so that was a good, that's, a, that's actually a great story. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the man himself, Christian, I, I, I thank him for joining me You know, today. This was, this was a good time. I had a real good time doing this. He rock and strapped me. So, you know, hopefully big things come from this. I, I heard, I heard, I heard that's what happened after you do an interview of anything with Edge or Christian. <laughs> yeah, so, so, uh, Christian, one, uh, one last plug, uh, go ahead and tell the people where they can, you know, uh, f- find the Cage Fighter Worlds Collab film. Uh, we all know it's going to be on May 16th. Uh, any, any last plug that you want to get in? Yeah, you know, check it out. It's, uh, like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a very, uh, it's a fun movie. It's a, it's a action-packed, um, a well-done movie. You know, it was, it was a lot of fun. Like I said, there's a pretty star-studded cast, like you mentioned, Chuck Liddell, Luke Rockhold, uh, Gina Gershon, myself, John Moxie. It's, uh, it's going to be big, man. It's going to be a lot of fun. And, and uh, like I said, hopefully people can, um, uh, you know, escape, escape, um, have a little bit of escape and have a little bit of entertainment. And, uh, you know, like I said, fight, uh, fight TV is, is a perfect place for, uh, for this to stream. It is, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Andrew Thompson. This is Christian. We all know Christian, man. This, this, this <laughs> guy right here, man. I say, uh, Christian, uh, you know, th- thank you again, man. Like, for, I, I seriously appreciate it. Thanks, man. Have a good one.